Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers and welcome back to the Building Structure series. In the last episode we looked at varying the walls into the third dimension, giving them a bit of varying height and I showed you how to deform the landscape or conform to an existing landscape. Now this is great for organic shapes, sort of hedges and other organic walls, but for man-made structures they tend to be built in straight segments. So today I'm going to show you how to create a wall leveling function that breaks your segments down into level areas. So let's get straight into it. So why is it important to have this option to level the walls? Well I'll illustrate by way of an example. If I take one of my spline points here and I use Shift T to make it into a clamped tangent, you can see that because we're now elevated by height, we have a problem um, creating the angle between the two walls. Um, so in this situation, we need to resolve this by creating a level plane in the Z axis. And that's what this uh, level wall tops function will do for us. You can see that it creates that level Z plane so that where this wall ends and this wall starts, we can place a pillar and also there's no distortion. So you still you can still have curves in your XY plane. That's not a problem, but it just creates a, um, a nice consistency for those connecting angles. So let's uh, start creating that and adding to our existing spine wall. So if you haven't already, make sure you've done the previous videos in the playlist listed in the description. So you're at the same point in your blueprint and then we'll add this new function. Here's where we got to in the last episode. So if I change some of these spline points to clamped points, so let's take some of these and use Shift T do one in the middle and another one at the end. And you can see the problem that I was talking about. So even the end here angles down and this um, pillar tries to angle upright. In fact, it's not totally upright, so we'll have to fix that as well. And here's some of the distortion I talked about. Now let's switch over to our spline wall blueprint. And first thing we need to do is create a Boolean so the level designer can decide whether to level the walls or not. So add a new variable. Let's call this stagger walls. Make sure it's a Boolean and make sure it's visible. And then we need to create a uh, function that levels the walls if this is selected to true. So find the part in the blueprint where it calculates the start and end mesh details. So this is where it uh, calculates the start position and this is where it calculates the end position of the um, segment, wall segment. So we need to create a new set of functionality in here but I'll do it as a macro and that way we can um, not clutter up this area of the blueprint. So go to your macros, create a new one and we'll call this make walls level and go over to the inputs and outputs and add in a new input which we'll call in start position and that's going to be a vector and then add another one in end position also a vector and then add two output parameters which are out start position and out end position and we'll come back to this in a second so go back to your main construction script now and we want to plug this in between here the start positions here and the ones that go into the set start and end for the spline mesh component so drag out from here start to type make walls level to find your macro and then Let's connect this output to here. And then we probably need to create a little bit of extra space, but uh, we'll figure it out later on. And then plug your end position in here and plug the output end position in here. So you've got something like this. 
So in positions, uh, start position and end position are going in and some start position and end position are coming out. And now we can concentrate on the functionality within here. So go back to the macro. And first thing we need to do is, is do the pass through of information if we don't want the walls staggered. So let's take our new variable here, stagger walls. And what we will do is a select vector. And we will plug in the start position. So if it's true, we want the original start position. So uh, sorry, if it's if it's true, we want to stagger the walls. If it's false, we want the original start position. So pull this start position in and connect it to the out start position. And then duplicate this. And the end if stagger walls is false, we want the original end position. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you that if um, we haven't set stagger walls, we're just passing through the original start and end position. And now we have to calculate new start and end positions depending on the wall heights. So we need to create a little bit of space before this. And let's start off by breaking the vectors for the start and end position. So take out your start position and do break vector and take out the end position and do break vector. And before we um, before we do the logic here, let's have a think about what we're trying to do here. What we want to uh, do is we want to create a new start and end position depending on whether the heights are lower in the first position than the end position or higher in the start position than the end position. So let's start off by creating a new uh, vector for the different scenarios. So over here, do a make vector. So in the situation where the start position is lower than the end position, we want to use the end, we want to use the start position's z value. So in that situation, our end position, if I pull this down here, will be its x and y, and it will be the height or z of the start position. So that's that's the situation, that's the position we want for the end if the start position is lower than the end position. Now, if the end position is lower than the start position, we want, I'll duplicate this, we want the start position to be its x and y, but we want to take the height of the end position. So these are the two positions we may want to use. Now we just have to decide on the, um, the logic that drives this. So let's take the z value of the start position and do a comparison, a less than comparison to the z value of the end position. Now we want to use this comparison to return the correct positions. So drag off here and create a select vector. And let's start off with the start position. So if the if the original start position is lower than the other start position, then we want to keep the um, original start position. So drag off there and plug it in there. Otherwise, we want to use this new start position, which has got the end position's height. And then duplicate this. And in this case, if the start position is not less than the end position, we want to use this new um, position here as the end position. And that is the end position with the start position's height. And if not, then we use the original end position. So drag the end position into here. And then 
Oh, and we need to make sure that the Boolean is plugged in here as well. So it's checking that. And then plug the start position into this selection. So it will be passed through if stagger walls are selected and the end position into this one so that the, this end position will be passed through if stagger walls are selected. And let's do a compile and a save. And it's time for a first test. So come over here and we have our new stagger walls a boolean here so let's select that on and some weird things are going on so it looks as though it's tried to stagger the walls so you can see they are staggered but they've got this weird sort of curving uh, functionality going on and this is because as well as making the wall positions level we need to make the tangent level on the z plane as well so that it's trying to do, especially on this steep bit here, it's trying to uh, use the tangents to deform the spline there. So it's a simple thing to do. We just need to make the tangent on Z plane of zero. So let's go to the blueprint again and go back to the main construction script. And so we want to add another uh, little macro here for the tangents that keeps their x and y tangents but makes the z zero. So let's do another macro. We'll call this make tangents level. And we will have an input vector of in tangent and an output of out tangent. And let's just plug that in on the main script here. So after we've clamped our vector size, drag out here and do make, make tangents level. And then plug the output into the start tangent. And then let's duplicate this plug it in from the end tangent and plug the output up here. Okay, now we just have to put the logic in there. So go back to the make tangents level and all we want to do is break, come out here, break the tangent. And then we want to make a new vector So X and Y stays the same, but the we make the Z zero. So the tangent is level on that plane. And then we just need to decide uh, which tangent to pass out based on the staggered walls or stagger walls Boolean. So drag that in here, do a select vector. And if the stagger walls is true, we just want to pass the in tangent out to the output. And if stagger walls is, f uh, sorry, the other way around. If stagger walls is true, we want this new tangent. If stagger walls is false, we want the original tangent here. Okay, and just tie that up a bit. So that should give the two options, depending on whether we've got the walls level or not. So compile this, save. And if we go back to our wall, you can see that everything is good now. So we have, even for curved, even for curved walls on the X and Y plane, it's still working fine because we're leveling them um, on the Z plane here and we're now leveling the tangents as well. So there's one final thing we need to do as well, which may not be completely obvious. So if I take one of these points here, let's just move it over a couple onto a steep area. And can you see how that pillar has just disappeared? If I go around the back of the wall, you can see that it's angled down here because when we placed the pillars, we were using the rotation of the um, spline point. And so sometimes if it's um, particularly steep, it will 
snap to the ground level. So we just need to put in a little bit of logic to fix that when we spawn the pillar. So let's go back to our spline wall, go to the construction script and let's find the section that spawned the um, pillars. So that was over near the start here. So here's the section that generated the pillars at clamp corners. And at the moment, all we're doing is getting the transform at the spline point and passing that in. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that the rotation element of it is, um, is zeroed out. So take that out, do a break, transform. And then we'll do another make transform after it to recombine it and then that this output will go into here and let's just move that over a little bit here so the location is going to remain the same the scale is going to remain the same all we're going to do is we're going to make a rotator of zero now it's up to you here. You could you could actually break this and put the X and Y components in, so it rotates. Um, it, it just stops the rotation on uh, one of the. In fact, sorry, you could put the Z in, so it has the rotation on the Z plane. But we want to stop it rotating on the X and the Y plane. So it's up to you if you want to plug the break this and plug the Z in to have rotation. But um, I'll just keep it simple and just put a completely zero rotation in here. And then that's what we'll plug in to the final rotation. So let's test that out, compile, save. And if we go back to our spline, our problematic um, pillar here is now spawned in the upright direction. So uh, that is um, everything we need to do for level walls. And we can now, we can now go between curved walls, um, obviously the tangents would have to be changed there but if we do want to introduce sharp angles we can now use this function here to make sure that they conform neatly to the landscape and uh, and the uprights there so that's all for today um, in the next episode I will probably look at um, creating tunnels using this system and how we can use them in the landscape, either have them conform to the landscape or maybe even bur burrow through the landscape as well. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.